Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Europa Universalis with me, Grey Hunter. Where last time I asked you guys what we should do at the conclusion of this war that we started with Gotland. And first off, let me just say that I love how much some of you are getting into the role playing of this as the whole Senate thing. That is amazing. Never change for you guys. Never change because you're you're fantastic. It's that sort of thing that makes me want to continue doing this hobby. I also realize that this is the first, well, technically it'll be the first video that I've uploaded for about a week. Although I uploaded the... I will have uploaded. It's, it's difficult talking in the past future tense. Anyway, point is, I realize that I haven't been uploading as much. University, I blame that. First couple of weeks, for those of you who go to uni, you know that it's killer. You know, you gotta get out, you gotta get all your assignments under control, you gotta get all your enrollment stuff under control, placements, all that other fun stuff, you know, yada yada yada. Anyway, enough about that. I will be continuing to upload videos, do not fear. Uh, I did have a look and see if I could release Sweden. I, uh, I accepted these two bits of land in a peace deal and then uh, I attempted to release them, and apparently I'm not allowed to. I'm not entirely sure why, but I'm not allowed to release some countries. Maybe because I'm not Scandinavian? I honestly don't know. So we're not going to be able to release Sweden, but what we can do is grab some land back for Denmark and possibly grab a little bit for Norway as well, so let's go and do that. Oh, somebody also said, take the island of Gotland so you don't have to deal with that bullshit anymore. And you know what? You are entirely right. You are entirely right. And when I click on the right screen, thanks, I will transfer the occupation of several provinces to Denmark so that Denmark can receive them in the peace deal. I don't know if I'll be able to get all of these, so I'm just going to transfer what I want to grab for Denmark. Um, hmm, do I want to grab something from over here in the peace deal to give to Polotsk? Maybe. Livland looks nice. I think we'll see if we can grab that for Polotsk. But first things first, let's go to the peace deal screen and see what we can get for our friends. So we want to grab Gotland and Holland, obviously. We want to grab the war goal, which was Skane, I think? Yes. Skane it was, and we want to grab... No, not really. Vastagotland first. Where are you hiding, Vastagotland? And Smarland. Oops. Vastagotland. There you are. Okay, so what does that take us to? 78% war score. Do we already own this? Yes. Yes, they do already own that. And we're grabbing that back. Let's see. Can I get both of these for Norway? Or just one of them. Let's start with Sog... Sogan? Sogan? This place. Because that'll give them a bit more land. Can we grab... Maybe here? Where are you in the list? Perfect. Alright, that's 88. Now, can we get Livland as well? So we can sell it. Do we have the war score? Yes, just. Okay, perfect. So we'll grab Livland and then we'll sell it off to Polotsk. So they have a port. Okay, so we've sent that demand. Are there any troops that are going to be stranded by this? Possibly. You need to head this way. Okay, I think we're good. Let's see how this goes. Do you accept our terms? You do? Excellent. Alright, so first things first, Polotsk. Oh, we're going to have to wait a few days. So let's see now. We got all the stuff that we wanted. Norway has a bit more land. Denmark, obviously, lots more land. This will cost us 75 diplomatic power. That's not too bad. And we gained some prestige. We suffered a little bit of aggressive expansion, but aggressive... Words. Aggressive expansion isn't that big of a deal when it's in such small amounts. Um, Denmark will suffer 24 aggressive expansion. I wonder if that transfers over to us because we are technically their overlord. I do not know, but what I do know is that I want you back in Danzig, so head off, and after they've passed over the fleet, I will change the composition of this, because I I reckon that that's what happened. The fleets got merged, because, um, because there was no admiral, and I don't like it. I do not like the way that works, so I'm going to merge them again, and then I'm 
create a new unit. I'm going to send one, two, three, four big ships. I said four big ships. Gosh, game. Oh my god. And six barks. And I'm actually going to station them in Danzig. And I'm going to put the Baltic fleet into port at Marienburg. Or Marienborg. I don't know. Is it Marienburg still? If it's said that way in French. Like if it's written that way. I'd imagine so. Let's see. Where did I send you off to? I think I sent you to Danzig. There's already an army there, so go to Pomerani Interior, I guess that means. I don't know. It's been a while since I did French. <laughs> now, where are you? Ah, right, of course. You were the army that I was going to split to reinforce these two legions. And I'm actually going to build another one of those armies. When I can find the screen. I'm going to build another one to reinforce this. And there's another one up here that I can't see because of all the tooltips. And I'm going to form you there. This one. There it is. Germanicus. So you're going to go to join these fellows. And you are going to come join these fellows. Perfect. Now, let us see. Palotsk, would you be willing... No, that's not what I want. This is what I want. Would you be willing to buy Livland? I'll make it a freebie. Yeah, I'll make it a freebie. Because I don't really need it. It's not a big deal to me. Um, somebody in the comments did say that we shouldn't really prop up small nations, but I want a few small nations because we have enough power to combat Gotland. And having these smaller nations that are actually becoming kind of strong will help with the whole not wanting to be too overpowered. Like, I'm not going to meddle with Iceland. If Iceland succeeds and conquers bits of Gotland, swell, great for them. I'm going to reinforce Polotsk a little bit if I can rig it so that I can get them these provinces so that they've got a nice uh, a nice stretch of territory. I probably will. But if Volga Bulgaria slash Russia decides to invade them, I'm, I'm not really going to make much of an effort to save them. Not really. Um, do I want to wait? I'm going to wait until this is done so that we've got two going at the very same time. Actually, you know what? Why am I doing that? That doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm an idiot. Um, I also believe that once our idea here gets filled out for Humanist, we will be able to consider the mission that we picked done, I think. Because the, the goal of the mission is just to create 100% religious uh, unity across your nation. It doesn't say that it has to be 100% through conversion, so I'm assuming that that will count. I don't know if it will or not, but that's how I imagine it would work. Well, let us see. Tolerance, do you score us what we need to get? Yes, you do. We achieved religious unity. We gained 10 prestige, 25 admin, and 25 diplomatic power. Not half bad. Um, I'm not sure if there's actually any particular advantage to having to having your religious unity over 100. Um, I know that getting it 200, getting to a hundred, because English is hard for me apparently today, um, getting it to 100 means that you have less rebellions happen over religious problems, which makes sense. Apparently your realm is united. Um, form an alliance with Poland is not what I want to do. Removing Gergen from the map, I honestly don't care enough. So I'm going to take this one. Um, I'm not sure if I'll do it straight away. I might wait a little bit. Because I'm not sure if I want to... Ooh. Grodno has entered a military coalition against us. Well, that's, that's not good. I wonder why. I guess maybe our aggressive expansion is counted as... Yeah, I guess we get... I guess we get their... Uh... Their penalty as well. I honestly don't know. I'm I'm not sure how aggressive expansion works. I might look it up, see how um, if I should be not being so aggressive with conquering for Denmark. I wouldn't have thought that it would count towards our score because it's not technically our country doing it. But apparently the game says no, you're an idiot, and I can respect it. Iceland will know. Oh, Iceland will trade give trade power to uh, Gotland, and they appear to be... Oh! Well, it looks like Norway wants Iceland back. I guess I can't really blame them. That would make sense. 
Oh hey, Iceland conquered Jamtaland, so that might mean that Norway is actually going to be a pretty powerful nation again. A petition for redress. Peasants typically had no voice, but they could occasionally gain access to the monarch and ask for redress. Sometimes these requests for redress would be directed at local lords, and stepping in to override a noble's local authority was very drastic. Um, if we do it, we lose some prestige, and if we don't, we gain some rebels. I could take the rebels. I like my prestige. And where are you? Oh, easy peasy. Right, you. Go and deal with that. And I completely forgot about you. I really should do something. You go and join him, and you go join him, and you guys will combine, and you guys will combine. Now we have many, many powerful armies in many, many places, and this makes me happy, because hopefully that will mean that we no longer get the uh, <laughs> the case where a rebel army ends up destroying a legion because tra -la 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 Now you don't have a legion number anymore, and I can't remember who you were. I think you were... Actually, I honestly cannot remember. I have no idea. I guess I could go look it up in the video and change it. But I'll just leave it. I'll change it at the end of the video set. I'll go look it up and see what it was. <laughs> you guys are all set, and... I think we're good. Now all we have to do is replace our statesman. So who have we got? An even better statesman. Don't mind if I do. Diplomat after diplomat has failed us. Their incompetence is so flabbergasting that the world has started to see us, see us in a different light. Well, you see, I could execute them, I suppose. I am an emperor, after all. But I guess that would be seen as kind of tyrannical. Just a little bit. And that's no more rebellion. Yeah, that didn't work out so swell for you, did it? Mm -mm -mm. Don't do stupid shit. Now, let's see about our technology. We're doing pretty good. I kind of want to try and advance enough so that Volga Bulgaria can get um, westernization started. We're at 10 across the board. What are they? 8, 8, and 8. They're probably going to go for military tech first because military tech for non-westernized nations is very, very important because if they don't have good military tech, they're going to get ruffle stomped every time. And how the hell did you get stranded over there? I don't even know. I wish I knew, but I don't. Alright. They can just stay there for now. I'm going to build... At least I would if I was on the right screen. I'm going to build... A transport flotilla. I'm gonna make 20 of them, I'm gonna make them in 20 provinces, and I'm gonna call it a transport flotilla because I'm so very original. Flotilla. There we go. And I'm gonna build one right in Danzig. Do it. Build me all of the things. We have made sure that Kaffa follows the one and true faith. This pleases me greatly. What would please me even greaterly... Yeah, I know. I, no, that, that doesn't even work. What would please me even more... I know, I can't take it back. I can't take it back. It's been said. It's it's there on YouTube. It is immortalized forever. Greaterly. I am sorry, world. Um, on a more serious note... Now I can't remember what I was actually complaining about. I literally can't remember what I was complaining about. <laughs> I, I got nothing. I can't remember. That's right. Now I do. Um, <laughs> I wish I had an Inquisitor available as an advisor. That's what I was complaining about. Actually, do I? No. I've got a Master of Mint and an Artist. Both of which are not as good as my Theologian. Ah, <sighs> herp derp <laughs> There's just something wrong. There's something wrong with me. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but it's something. So Iceland looks like it's getting its ass thwacked. This displeases me. This is not a good thing. Uh, what's that for? Grand Army. Uh, what does it lead to? Roman architecture, which leads to production efficiency. I'm not terribly worried about that one. 
How much... Oh. Well, I couldn't get it anyway. You know what? Actually, I'm not gonna go... Yes, we trust them to remain loyal. We've always trusted them. We have always trusted them. And one day, they will be nice and help us. So, I'm not gonna go for the idea, but I am gonna spend that military power in... Rebuilding our forts. Or at least, better fortifying. I know it's kind of against the whole military skill thing, but we won't fortify the entire border. We'll just fortify the bit that we fought around recently. I think we can justify that as role-playing. Mainly because, you know, we just fought around this area. It's kind of a big deal. So we'll fortify the border. And that's it. But what we will do while we're on the screen is we will build armories across the rest of this area because I figure we can justify needing to build up our armed forces. I mean, we are an empire that has been at war recently. Kind of need soldiers. It's kind of a big deal. And how much military power we got? Oh, one more. There we go, and we will build some marketplaces because I do like money, and I don't like the pattern. <laughs> I am obsessive compulsive about my marketplaces. Let me tell you something about it. It means all of Spain needs to have all of the marketplaces ever. All of them. There we go. Oi, Aragon, get in on this. And we still have a fair bit left over, so let's get the rest of Italy and Switzerland and all those other places that are in this general area. It's mainly just Italy and Switzerland. And we will make sure that they are all traded the fuck out of. There we go. Um, mainland Europe first, or this bit? You know what, let's give some Africa love. There you go. We're like Oprah. You get a marketplace, and you get a marketplace. Everyone gets a marketplace, except you, because I ran out of monarch points. That's that's a damn shame. That is a damn shame. Great. Those damn Grodnanese. Grod Grodnanese? I don't know what you call them. Grodno. Those people. Actually, those people probably works. And you are going to go sit in Stettin. Yes. Because as much as I'd like to leave you up here, you're suffering great attrition over in Finland. And Finland, while it is a great place to be, as Monty Python has taught us all, it's not so great for attrition. Which is a damn shame, because, you know, Finland. Finland is the country for me. And you can go back to Danzig. Um, I'm justifying that in that I don't really need a fleet down in the southern area. I can always build another one. In fact, I think I will do that. I will build two fleets. I'll build an early Roman navy in Cadiz, and then I'll build a transport flotilla also in Cadiz. And that should set us up for exploration when the time comes. Oh, speaking of... What's this? Local traditions. Um, yes, I will take less national unrest. That is a very, very good thing. Speaking of ships and such, I should probably build dockyards down here, because if I don't build dockyards, then it's going to take ages to build ships when we finally head towards India and such. Also, um, a few people commented on the previous videos, and I can see your comments, but apparently I'm not allowed to reply to them, so I'm probably just going to reply to comments in future videos, mainly, to, mainly so you guys can see that I'm responding, and also because there's not much to do in peacetime, which is the mantra for Europe Universalis 4. Anywho, um, some of you said, hey, how come you haven't taken exploration yet? And the reason is because um, I didn't want to take it as our next idea group when the choice was presented, because if we start colonizing in the early 1500s, we'll pretty much be done by 1650. Pretty much. So I'm thinking if we... And no, Poland, I do not want alliance. Go away. Um, I'm thinking that if we pick it up between 1545 and 1560, it'll be better because, one, the nations that are in the places that we would colonize will have had a chance to prepare themselves. They will still be technologically outclassed, but I'm hoping that there'll be some bigger nations and perhaps, you know, like, 
I'm not going to send an entire wave of armies across. I'm going to kind of roleplay... Um, admin power? Nah, our prestige is getting close to 90. Let's go with prestige. Um, I'm going to roleplay a little bit the unwillingness of nations to send army upon army upon army over into a foreign land that's really, really far away. So if I send an army and it gets beaten by a local coalition of tribes, I'm just going to make peace with them. I'm just going to let them go and colonize in a slightly different spot. Um, unless there's one particularly powerful lot and I go, hey, Senate guys, you, would you like me to make peace or do we go to war with this coalition of tribes because they're fucking huge and might present a problem for our colonists in the future. The distant future, the year 2000. So that's going to be how we're going to deal with um, with the Americas. In India, I'm probably not going to intrude very much into India itself. I'm probably just going to try and grab Ceylon and... Ceylon? Sri Lanka. We'll just call it Sri Lanka. <laughs> I'm going to try and grab Sri Lanka and... Um, That'll probably be it. I wish I could see it on the map so I could show you exactly what I'm talking about doing. But um, I'm probably just going to grab Mysore and the surrounding area. So the southern tip of India, and I'm just going to call it done there. For the island nations of the, uh, the Indonesia area, I'm probably going to leave them alone for the most part. Brunei is probably going to be the strongest of the nations that they get an idea at the end of their idea groups, which lets them colonize the islands. I think it's actually just called colonize the islands and and so they did colonize and grab all of the wonderful things. So I think that's how we're probably going to deal with colonization but I am going to pick it up. I just didn't want to pick it up too early because too early is ridiculous because it means at the end of the game everyone is either westernized or the map is painted your color. Neither of which will make a fun Victoria 2 campaign. I'm, I'm even looking at uh, Victoria 2 and thinking, well, Victoria 2 is great and all, but by the time we get to 1935, I don't know if we'll be able to have a, um, a World War 2 scenario for Hearts of Iron. I'm hoping so. I'm hoping that something is going to come up and, you know, plot twist me, like Russia becomes massively fucking huge or the Timurids don't fall apart. Something that will present a problem in Victoria 2 and onward, because in Europa Universalis, it's very Eurocentric. Because, naturally, Europe was pretty much the most powerful area by the dawn of the Renaissance, because they had a lot of the power. Basically, when it comes down to it, they, they had guns. They had guns and spears. No, I messed that up. I was going to say they had guns and guns beat spears, but apparently I can't even pull off one-liners. I'm sorry. So, the whole thing with Europa Universalis is that the Europeans are the strongest. They, they go to other places, and in the words of the great Eddie Izzard, they say, Excuse me, do you have a flag? And usually countries go, well, no, and they go, oh, well, sorry, can't have a country if you don't have a flag. Our army's Elon strikes fear into the enemy. Charge A. So that's what I'm going to do in regards to colonization. It's going to happen just later than I could have done it, for balance reasons, because I don't want to be, I mean, come on. <laughs> we're the Roman Empire, we're the rebuilt Roman Empire, I'm pretty sure that we're very powerful already. One might even say we are a little bit OP. Um, somebody asked also in a private message, and I can't remember, for the life of me remember what your name was, I am sorry. Um, they asked, oh hey, Augustus Nicholas, what, what will you give me? Ah. Well, I don't need either of those things, but I'm going to go with um, the plus one stability. And will that mean that we're able to get admin technology faster? Yes, that means we should be able to get it, well, by, by 1524, according to that. Um, the forts are our strength, or we must always attack. I'm going to go with morale. Because we've been fighting a long time, with our main policy being charge, charge, charge. I think that after a war, the military thinking might change a little bit. Perhaps favor the defense a little bit more. 
Poland, seriously, I'm never saying yes, go away. They just want me to be their ally so they can attack Volga Bulgaria, and I'm not interested. I'm not having it. Oh hey, Iceland fell. So yeah, Norway is a Norway is a powerful country again. Now what do you want me to do? No, I no. Because if I take that, then I can't when the when the Reformation comes along, which it inevitably will, because there's other Catholic nations, I can't um, embrace the Counter Reformation, and that would make me very sad. It would. It would. It would. Um. That's right. Somebody messaged me. They uh, they said, "Hey, what are you gonna do about Denmark?" And that's a good question because I think that because we're so massive we can just pick not to integrate them because I'm pretty sure that our country being so humongously huge where's the uh yeah there we go um you have the ability to integrate after 50 years have passed and you will after 50 years start getting a small chance to inherit the country which is very dependent on how large you are already and that mainly comes from your base tax. So because we're so humongously humongous, we have a very, very high base tax. So I'm pretty sure that Denmark itself will never actually be inherited by us. We could integrate it, but I don't think we will, uh, we will just suddenly get, by the way, Denmark is part of your country, hooray, and the whole area just be swathed in purple. So I'm, I'm looking Mainly at leaving them as a as an independent country under our banner. Though, if there is a way to break a personal union, I might try doing that. I don't know. I I kind of want to load up a test game, fast forward fifty years, integrate them, and then just see if I could release them again as an independent nation. Because I'd like to do that. I don't particularly want Denmark. I'd very much rather Denmark and Norway kind of just duke it out in Scandinavia, do their own thing. Oh no, we lost our theologian. And there's nothing really good to replace him with. I guess we'll go with the philosopher. Because the master of mint is useless and the artist is a plus one. I no. Not even once. Do not want. So that's what I'm gonna do with Denmark. I'm I'm Probably just never going to integrate them. I'll probably Google it and see if I can just release them. If I integrate them, if I can release them as their own nation again, because I really don't want them. I mean, I love Denmark and all, but um, I was rather kind of hoping that Miranda's line would last a little bit longer. Unfortunately, she and her descendants had the indecency to die. Oh, and I looked it up. That guy had been king for about five years, so he had plenty of time. He wasn't in a regency either and I think that this is just bugged because this is like the 10th Eugenius the fourth so I I got nothing I don't even know anymore I'm psh, 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 whatevs all right now what do we got here an influential preacher I think this will be a yes papal influence all right so we're going to take the first one, a young devout preacher has spoken out recently about how great our adherence to the teachings of the Holy Father in Rome is. This can only be good for our future. It is. We will send him to Rome and up uh, before it takes all of it away. Now we are in with a chance. We have a chance to become a papal controller. And on that note, actually, how much, how many points do we need to get military tech? 701, we have 490. Okay, I'm going to complete our objective in the mission to fortify Astrakhan. I'm going to fortify a few of the places around it. Not too many. Just a few. Because it would make sense that if you're, in, if you're reinforcing one part of the border, you'd reinforce it, you know, like a region. So that should fulfill the goal and I'm hoping that there will be a opportunity to pick uh, become papal controller because that's a nice one because I would like to be papal controller I mean we are papal controller already I'm not entirely sure why if you are so huge and if you're the Roman Empire you can't just say hey Rome is ours now I would have if it gave me the option to release the Pope and have him be my vassal I would have done that but it's it's not a thing and the Pope will never vassalize. 
as far as I can tell, because he likes his independence. And frankly, I, I can sympathize with him a little bit. I like my independence too.